Hi everyone, it's Jamie Warner here, CEO of Envirosoft. And you know, I thought going into 2022, it would be a great idea to summarize some of the things that I've observed as a vendor, but also as a MSP owner, speaking to hundreds of MSPs all around the world. In most countries, North America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe, UK, uh, Asia, everywhere, I've made some observations uh, around what MSPs are doing uh, in their businesses and I figured out that there seems to be four common mistakes that MSPs are making and I'm benchmarking this on my SMB MSP. We're now around 50 staff, we're pushing 10 million in revenue and it's given me perspective onto why we've been able to grow and achieve that type of result and why others um, haven't been able to do it. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to let you know my learnings and hopefully that'll give you some gold nuggets going into 2022 so you don't make one of these four mistakes. All right, mistake number one, not focusing on your IT services proposal and as a bonus, having no sales target. I see countless MSPs, I speak to you all, and the one thing I've noticed is that nobody's spending a lot of time on the structure and layout of their IT services proposal. So how you actually present your services to a prospect. It's not good enough just to focus on your pricing and packaging, you have to actually focus on how you discuss your services with a, with a client. Uh, one of the things that I see happening is that you're pretty much just selling the what and not selling the why. So I recommend you go and watch Simon Sinek's uh, TED talk around this. You can't just turn up and say, hey, we're awesome at IT services and uh, this is what we do. We've got all these amazing products and here's my price. It doesn't work. You've got to uh, talk about relationship and partnership and there are things that you want to put throughout your proposal. Give them an idea of what it would look like to be working with you. It's not all about product, it's about relationship. That's why they're moving from one provider to the next. It's all about relationship. It's not about the network setup. It's got nothing to do with that. It's, it's a little bit to do with that, but that's not the primary reason they're looking for a new partner. So work on your proposal. What are the first things you say? The second, the third, do you sell the why first, then the how? How do you differentiate? Do you have purple cows throughout your proposal? Do you bind your proposal? Put it in a folder, make it look professional. Do you dress up and down to who you're talking to? A law firm, you might wanna wear a suit. Someone else, you can be more casual. Think about your proposal, think about how you present. Do you have uh, a customer experience platform, for example, to show the customer that they're gonna get this amazing experience versus just telling them that you've got mouse pads and stickers with your phone and email on it. So focusing on your proposal is mission critical. It's all about increasing conversion. Most MSPs don't get that many new business leads every month, you just don't. So therefore the main thing you wanna focus on is conversion and the only way to work out and sorry, to improve your conversion is to make sure that that proposal is slick it's like a legal argument. You're going to take, take them through this argument. By the end, they've got no other choice but to say, wow, you guys are number one. And we've been doing that for many, many years. It's one of the reasons we keep growing because we differentiate. We differentiate our customer experience. We differentiate our pricing and packaging. We differentiate the way we lay out the proposal, how we guide them through, talking about the why first, not the what, all these sort of things. And then on top of that, as a bonus mistake, is not having a sales target. You need a sales target for your support deals for 2022. How many do you need to sign up to keep your engine going? For my MSP, I've got to sign up over 12 months, 40 to $50,000 of monthly support. So that's by the end of 12 months. How much do you need to sign up to make sure you're not going backwards dollar wise and that you're going forward and that you're catering for churn? Some people say to me, I don't have churn. Everyone has churn from time to time. It's, that's crazy to say that you're never gonna have churn. So you need to factor in what your churn is, dollar-wise, potentially, of your monthly support. I'm only talking about monthly support, not your managed services, things that you resell, Office 365, et cetera. So get that sorted and, uh, and you'll be set for success. Get your IT services proposal bang on, 
get your target sorted, and you'll be ready to nail it for 2022. All right, number two, putting your stack in your support packages. This is a controversial one. I have realized after speaking to so many MSPs uh, that I'm in the minority on this for some reason. And I think it's to do with the fact that maybe there's a lot of coaches out there coaching you guys to do this, but I have a real strong agitation towards putting product in your support plan packages. And here's the reason, there's a few reasons. Firstly, uh, the customer's looking for a new relationship, not a solution. That's the primary thing they're looking for. So if when you first meet them, you start talking about product uh, services and, and relationship stuff and product and solution, you're now complicating the discussion. So we don't do that. We only talk here at the support package and we'll come back to you with what other things that you need after doing an audit so that we properly know what you need and that we separate them and it works like a treat. If you have them all bundled in, you complicate the discussion, you actually inflate your price and you make it harder for a customer to make a buying decision. So even though the entire MSP market seems to be thinking, well, if I'm gonna do good, better, best, which is a tick, so if you're doing good, better, best, well done. That is absolutely the only way to do it. One option is ridiculous. Buyers are, you know, budget conscious, middle of the road or Rolls Royce, you have to cater to them. To say that there's only one option leaves them no room to negotiate. So if you give them one option, it's a yes or no proposition. You need to give them options so they can kind of decide on what a solution is. It gives you tactically a way to negotiate with them on inclusions, not on price. So good, better, best all the way. But if you're gonna do it, good, better, best, please consider not putting stack in your packages because it just, inflates price, complicates discussions, and slows down the sale. I think it's worth trying for 2022, a different approach, maybe a contrarian approach, but an approach that's used by now an almost $10 million SMB focused MSP. Worth considering. Okay, number three, no VCAO sales compression. You've probably not heard that terminology before. That's because uh, I've made it up. But what I've observed in the market as one of the mistakes people are making, it's not understanding that every client is fundamentally representative of a pipeline for your uh, network upgrades and product resale. If you got all your clients in an Excel spreadsheet, you put them down the left-hand side, and then you arbitrarily went through each one and worked out how much possibly could they spend with you. Could be a couple of new laptops, desktops, a new firewall switch, UPS, could be a project to get off the 365, whatever it happens to be, add it up. And I guarantee you that on average, there's probably about a $10,000 per uh, client pipeline. So if you've got 50 clients, there's a $500,000 pipeline. And the mistake that MSPs make that I'm observing is that they don't A, see it as a pipeline. And remember, this is not sales for sales sake. These are things the customer actually needs. Stuff's out of warranty, stuff's uh, old, and or they just do need to migrate to the cloud. Like these are things they actually need. But that's a pipeline. And what I'm noticing MSPs are not doing is identifying it as a pipeline and then going out and actually presenting recommendations to clients on all these different things. I'm not saying you won't do it. I'm just saying you won't do it in a fast enough fashion and that is the key difference between an MSP that grows faster and an MSP that does it a lot slower. Is that we get that 500 grand pipeline and we try and squeeze all those conversations into a shorter period as possible and we get all this conversion that we can as possible in the shortest period of time. So if you spread that sale with the same deal flow over three years and I managed to do that in my MSP over one year, then that's the difference of why I sell more and grow faster. Sales compression, super important. And one of the other things you've got to understand around the VCAO process is that all the tools, all the tools do not help you present recommendations. They basically give you a budget line, which then turns into you having to do a quote. So you do your presentation of your, your audit findings. Then you have to do a quote in another meeting. So now it's stretched it into two meetings because the client says to you, well, thanks for the budget, but how much is that gonna cost? And you know, are there options? Like, how's that gonna work? Oh, I'll come back to you with a quote. 
So now you come back to them with a quote, and then they say, oh, actually, can you remove this and remove that? And you're going back, back and forth, back and forth with a quote. Half the time they go dark after the first thing. So the way that Envirosoft does that, for example, and my MSP has been doing that for 10 years, is we have a, a process called Solution Builder, where you give them options right from the start and you build it out. They click it and it adds it up for them so that when you do the quote, they've already made the buying decision, they can just sign off on it. So sales compression works by having uh, those conversations faster, but when you're there, you also want them to make a buying decision faster too. And that's where you need some tactical strategy of using approaches like a good, better, best solution builder in the Embarasoft BCO platform, for example. And you can do it in a Word document, you don't need to use our solution, but that's how you do it. So then you walk away going, great, so I'm gonna quote you on this, is there anything standing in the way of going ahead? Oh no, that all sounds good. So now you're chasing sign off, not chasing decisions around what the solution is. Sales compression never gets spoken about. And I'm telling you, it's the number one reason around the procurement side of things that you just don't see that growth like other MSPs do. The faster you have the conversations, the faster you'll get sign off, and lo and behold, magically, you'll increase your sales through sales compression and fundamentally sales efficiency. So food for thought. Don't make that mistake in 2022. All right, the fourth and final mistake that I'm noticing over this last year in 2021 is not focusing on customer experience. Are you a Nokia MSP providing a Nokia approach using mouse pads, stickers, and email and phone only? So what you've got to remember is that as an MSP, we are all fundamentally customer service businesses that happen to be in technology. We're not actually technology businesses. So customer service and customer experience is clearly everything that relates to our, our businesses. How many times have you actually lost a client because you did something wrong technically? It's, it's probably 70% of the time or 80% of the time around uh, not getting back to them fast enough, the way you communicated, not getting along with an engineer, not being proactive with your discussions, all these types of things, and just generally how you interact with the customer. And we're going into 2022, and the dominant method for getting IT support is still phone and email. Email, why are we making customers email us gobbledygook of information? And obviously that's the purpose of what Envirosoft's all about, which is to get MSPs off support at and get us onto a more modern experiences with apps and client portals and all those sorts of things. But you know, that is what it's gonna to take to be successful in 2022. You can't put your head in your sand around customer experience. We're a customer experience, customer service business, and you can't be turning up to sales presentations. So getting a new client and imagine my MSP turns up. So, cause I've been doing this for 11 years, differentiating this way. So I turn up to the sales meeting and I do my awesome presentation that I've thought out, you know, checkpoint number one of the mistakes, and, and it's delivered professionally. It's an awesome argument of why they should partner with us. And a big part of that is of our how, so I've sold the why, then I talk about the how. The how is like, how do we deliver a differentiated service? And we talk about our, our apps and client portals and speeding up the support process. We show them the training videos, the cartoon videos, our training bots, this whole experience that they're gonna get when they come on board with my MSP. And then everyone else rocks up into those sales meetings and that same client asks them, well, what are you gonna, how, you, how do we interact with you? Knowing in the back of their mind they've just seen this amazing experience. And then when you say, well, we'll give you our phone number and email and we'll put that on a mouse pad and sticker, who do you think's gonna win that deal? Who do you think's gonna stand out? We always stand out. That's why my MSP keeps getting bigger and bigger. Remember, these are the mistakes I'm noticing other MSPs make that are smaller or not growing as fast as what we grow. So customer experience is where the game is going to be won. It's gonna help you differentiate. It's gonna help you get more, be more productive because you get the correct information. It's gonna stop tickets coming through. It's gonna improve communication. It's gonna improve your account management piece by showing visible reporting around Office 365, BCAO present, presentations, etc. That's where the game's gonna be won, customer experience. And I'll leave you with this. Remember that company that's out there called electric.ai. They have raised well over $100 million purely to build an innovative MSP. That's it, 
They're just trying to build an innovative MSP. And in the last four years, they've scaled to, I think, 40 or 50,000 devices under management. Yes, with a lot of money, but they're winning deals because they're differentiating around a modern approach to how IT support should be. So have a think about it. Are you a Nokia MSP stuck in the past with the old way, or are you gonna finally go to the next level, look at a customer experience platform, deliver a modern experience with apps and client portals, etc., and go to the next level in your MSP? Have a think about it, and I wish you all the success in the world, guys. Thanks for watching this uh, in 2022 and beyond. Hopefully some of these tips really helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, drop me a line. We'd love to, to debate the whole MSP game with you. Take care.